Hello and welcome to Advanced Git. In this video I would like to talk about some Advanced Git features. Please note that uh, most of them are not used really often, but in some cases that may be really, really useful. And uh, here I'll talk about rebasing with quashing, about amending of commits, about cherry picking. Also, I'll explain you what is reflog and how to filter out commits in Git history. Also, I'll explain you usual development workflow if you work with Git on a day-by-day -day basis. This video is part of my course called Complete Git and GitHub Guide. In that 18 hours long course, I explain everything in details from the ground up. And the main point is that in this course, I'll explain in details how Git works under the hood, and you'll learn what is blob, what is tree, how Git object is basically structured, and so on. But uh, let's dive into advanced Git, and please note that in a first comment under this video, you'll find timeline for all sections. For this advanced section, we need the real-world repository with a bunch of commits, with multiple authors, uh, that has uh, multiple branches that are active, some branches should be merged, and so on. And you can choose any public repository you want. You can even choose your own repository if you have one. I'll choose, uh, for example, Vue.js repository that is available under github.com slash Vue.js slash Vue. It is a really popular JavaScript framework and uh, actually doesn't matter whether you know JavaScript or not. We will use this repository just uh, as sample repository for performing uh, different advanced tasks such as, for example, stashing, uh, rebasing, with squashing, and so on. So please clone any repository of your choice to your local computer in order to proceed to next lectures. I'll clone this one, I'll click here on clone or download button and copy this URL. After that, I'll go to terminal and as usually CD to desktop and here enter git clone and paste copied URL. Again, I'm simply cloning one of public repositories. Okay, let's press enter. Cloning into view. It may take some time because this repository is relatively large. You see how many objects it has, more than 50,000. So let's wait a bit. Okay, cloning was successful and now I can cd to view folder and here you'll see that default branch is there. And this is indication that default branch at GitHub was changed from master to dev specifically for this project. And uh, now I'll add this uh, repository also to source tree. Let me go there and uh, close this repository and add here existing local repository because now view repository is actually local on my computer. Let me choose this folder and click open and double click on this repository. And this repository was opened in source tree. And immediately you see that there are some branches under development that were not yet merged into main dev branch. Also you see that some branches before were merged into master branch. For example, this branch, branch 2.6 was merged into dev branch. Okay, let me also add this repository to GitHub desktop. Let's go there, GitHub desktop, and here let's click add and add existing repository. Add local repository, choose, and I'll choose same folder, this one, and click open, and add repository. Okay, this repository was added here as well, and the current branch is there. One more step left here, and I'll open this repository in Visual Studio Code. Let's go there, click here, file, open, and choose same folder, this one, and click open. Okay, we are all set and now we are ready to proceed and in the next lecture I will show you some advanced options that you can use with git log command. I will see you in the next lecture. Bye bye. Now on your local computer you should have any of the public repositories that have enough commits and branches. And in this lecture I would like to show you some advanced options for git log command. And the such options are one line, graph, dash p, and dash stat. Okay, so let's get started and please open up your cloned repository in terminal. And here let's first type simply git log. And with this command you'll see actually extended view of all commits that were made. And here you may find such data as 
full commit uh, SHA hash, pointers of uh, local head and uh, dev branch. Also, you are able to see here remote pointers for remote dev branch and remote head. Also, for each commit, you see here outer date of commit and commit message. But also, there is a short version of git log command. And if you want to see just one line per commit, you need to add option one line, like so. And um, in such case, you'll see collapsed view and um, every commit will fit actually into one line. And um, each line starts with short version of SHA1 hash. And after commit hash, you'll see here commit message. And uh, if real commit message is longer than just one line, then Git will shorten uh, this commit message just to one line of text. That's a view of a git log command with one line option. Next one. I have shown you before that there is also command git lg. And this command is similar to git log with one line option. But here you'll also see date when commit was made. And also you'll see actual username of person who has made specific commit. Great. Let's proceed. And the next option for git log command is uh, graph. And with this option, Git will show you also graph of commits and the graph actually shows how many parents uh, each commit has. And for example, if I'll scroll down, I may find somewhere commit with uh, multiple parents. You notice that most commits have only single parent. And uh, let me let me actually close this view and add here also one line along with graph option. And now I'm able to see which commits have multiple parents. And here it is. For example, this commit where branch 2.6 was merged into dev branch has two parents. And here you clearly see that. So here is first parent. And if I'll scroll down, I may find second parent. You'll see that this feature branch has a bunch of commits and all those commits are visible here. And if I'll scroll down to the end of this uh, branch, you'll see here second parent commit for the commit that had two parents. Okay, that's how you are able to observe graph of commits in terminal. Next option. Let me delete the graph and one line and add option dash dash start. And here additionally to information about every commit, you'll see quantity of actual changes made in specific commit. For example, in this commit, those two files were changed. And totally two files were changed and uh, 10 lines were added. And those pluses mean that five lines of code were added to this file and five lines of code were added to this file. If I'll scroll down to the next commit, you'll see that same files actually were changed, but now six lines of code totally were added and 30 lines were deleted. And those pluses and minuses mean how many lines were added or deleted in every file. Same relates to other commits. For example, here only one file was adjusted. And uh, totally there were 50 adjustments and uh, 26 lines of code were inserted and 24 were deleted. Okay, that's the result of dash dash start option. Next option, dash p. With this option, you'll see not just... Uh, which files were changed. Instead, you'll see actual changes in every file. From my point of view, it's actually not convenient to view file changes in terminal, but anyway, you can quickly observe which changes were made in every file. For example, in this file, this part with green pluses was added, and if I'll scroll down, you'll see that, uh, for example, in commit before, some lines were removed, those marked with a red color. But my recommendation here to you, if you want to observe changes in files, please use any graphical user interface, for example, VS Code or GitHub Desktop or Source 3 or something else. There you can do that much more convenient. Okay, that's all options that I wanted to show you here in this lecture. Actually, one more left. Let me show you also option with dash and number. If I'll enter git log and dash form, I'll see only four last commits. And if I'll add, for example, one line option, like so, I'll see only four last commits in collapsed view mode. Okay, that's all for this lecture. And in the next one, let me show you one more git log command, but it is called git short log. I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye bye.
Next command that I want to show you is git short log. And this command shows you actually summary of all commits made in repository. And you are able to see which authors have made more commits and you are able even sort uh, this output uh, in descending order starting from the authors that have made most commits. Ok, let's try it in action. git short log. And by default uh, this output will be actually sorted by author name. And uh, here in parentheses you'll see quantity of commits made by specific author. For example, this author AchillesJ has made 21 commits and below you'll see actual commit descriptions for every commit. If you want to sort this output uh, by quantity of commits for every author, you may add here option dash n. And now you'll see that most active author is Evan Yu. Also, you are able to suppress list of all commit descriptions and for that you can add option dash s summary. And now you'll see only list of authors along with quantity of commits made by every author. Also, you can add information about emails for every author. For that simply add option dash e email. And now along with name of every author you'll see his email. And in this list you see that viewbot is second active author for this repository. Ok, that's all what I wanted to show you in this lecture and in the next one let me show you how you are able to actually filter results of git log command. I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye bye. I have just shown you that with git short log command you are able to find out which authors made changes in repository and uh, how many commits each author has actually made. Now in this lecture let me show you how you are able to filter git log output. For example, you want to find all commits that were made by specific author. And if I'll get back to git short log command with dash n dash s option, let's suppose that we want to find out commits that were made by Achilles J. And for that we can use specific filter option. Let me close this output and write git log dash dash author equal sign and here in double quotes write name of the author you are looking for. And I'll paste this name and press enter. And now I'll see only commits made by this specific author. I can also combine this output with one line option, like so. And now I'll see commits made by Achilles J in collapsed view. I see only shortened SHA-1 hash and the short commit description. Ok, that's how you are able to find the commits of specific author. Please note that this filter is actually regular expression filter and you are able even enter part of the author name like so and it will find results same as before. Ok, that's filtering by author. But what if you want to filter by specific word or sentence or something else? For that you can use another filter. Let me clear terminal and type here git log with one line option. And let's suppose that you are looking for a commit that has, for example, these numbers somewhere in description or commit message. Let me copy those numbers. And for that you need to use git log with option dash dash grab equal sign and here in double quotes paste search query like so. Let's press enter and now I'll find all commits that have actually those numbers somewhere in commit message or commit description. And if I'll add here one line option, I'll see that there is just single commit that matches my query. And if you'll want for example to find something else, Let's uh, write for example here dev, like so. You'll see that uh, those commits in this output have dev somewhere in commit description. Ok, that's how you are able to filter commits by specific author or by specific uh, sentence or word. That's all for this lecture and in the next one let me show you how you are able to adjust formatting of output of git log command. I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye bye. Let's proceed and now let me show you how you are able to set custom formatting for git log command. I mean formatting of the output. By default you'll see this output in extended view, let's say, and with one line option you'll see such output. 
but what if you want to adjust uh, results of uh, this uh, query? Actually, this query to Git database that contains commits. And if you want to do so, you need to use priority formatting. Let me clear terminal and here let's type git log dash dash priority equal sign format colon and here in double quotes let's for example write percentage sign h like so closing double quotes and press enter and now in this output you'll see only complete sha1 hashes of all commits in history let's clear terminal and uh, go back to history like so and uh, write here also percentage sign cn let's press enter and now i see name of committer along with full sha1 hash of every commit and now you understand that uh, those percentage sign and uh, some letters are actual variables that uh, git replaces with actual data from commit and the cn stands for committer name and uh, capital h stands for full sha1 hash You can also output shortened version of sha1 hash of every commit like so. Instead of capital H, simply write lowercase h and press enter. And now you'll see shortened version of sha1 hash of every commit. You can also add human readable words between those variables like uh, outer of commit colon and here will be commit sha1 hash colon enter. And now information about commits was formatted in such a way. First comes out of commit, for example, even you, and after that comes commit sha1 hash. Also, you are able to add, for example, commit date. Let's add here date colon and write percentage sign commit date. Let me actually add here semicolons like so and semicolon here. Let's press enter. And now I see another formatting. I see commit outer short sha1 hash of commit and commit date. That's how you are able to use priority formatting to adjust uh, view of results of git log command. That's all for this lecture and in the next one let me get back to merge commits and uh, show you how you are able actually to filter out merge commits because merge commits are actually auto commits that were made automatically by git. Or if you want to view only merge commits you are also able to do so. Let's write it in the next lecture. I'll see you there. Bye bye. You know that uh, when you perform merge of branches and uh, want to merge two or three branches together, Git may apply either fast forward merge approach or three way merge approach. And if Git performs three way merge, it actually creates new merge commit. And such merge commits are actually automatic commits and they are created automatically by Git. They are not created by human. That's why sometimes it is really useful to filter out merge commits, if especially there are a lot of them, and view only commits made by people. Or if you want on the other hand to view only merge commits, you are able also to do so. And in this lecture let me quickly show you how to do that. In order to find only merge commits, I can write here git log dash dash merges. And let's add also one line option. Enter. And now I'll see only merge commits. And you'll see that, for example, in this commit with this sha1 hash, branch called async improvements was merged into their branch. And here, for example, on this line, we see that show display branch was merged into next branch and here is corresponding sha1 hash of commit. And that's actually all merge commits that were created specifically in this repository. And there is actually reason for that and in the next lectures I'll explain you why in some cases people decide not to merge branches in traditional way and instead rebasing with squashing is used. But uh, let's get back to that later on. Now I can see that uh, there are just few merge commits in this repository. I can also use another option dash dash no merges in order to see results without merge commits like so. And now I'll see only commits made actually by people or during merging using other techniques. That's option dash dash merges and dash dash no merges. Let me actually go to one of repositories that we have used before in this course and use this command there. For example, I'll cd to desktop and go into repository 
called uh, the test head. And here let's enter git log dash dash merges. And I'll see single merge commit here. And if I'll enter no merges here, I'll see all commits except merge commits. Okay, that's how this command works and it is really useful if repository has a bunch of merge commits that are actually automatic commits. And you don't want to look at those commits and you want to find only human-made commits. That's all for this lecture and that's all actually about options that you are able to use with git log command. Of course, there are also other options, but I have shown you most useful. In the next lecture, I'll explain you how to use git reset command and how you are actually able to modify history. I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye-bye. In the previous lectures, we have discussed a few git log options that allow you to find, for example, commits made by specific author. Or you are able to use a keyword and find all commits that have this specific keyword somewhere in commit message or commit description. From this lecture on, I'll explain you some additional advanced git commands that actually modify git history. And that means that those commands are destructive commands. And uh, it is really, really important to understand how those commands work and uh, use them with caution. And my personal recommendation to you, please avoid using those commands on any public branches. And the public branch is usually either master branch or release branch or dev branch, like in our case in view repository. And uh, those branches are usually checked out by different people. And when you will modify history in those branches, it will lead to unexpected behavior of those branches on other computers. But on the other hand, you are safely able to use those commands on private branches and the branches you are only currently working on, like any feature branch you are working on without any other collaborators. And the first command I want to talk about here is git reset. This command allows you to discard some committed changes. What I mean? For example, you have made uh, any commit, but you are not happy with those changes and you want to discard this commit or several commits and you want to get back to previous state of your repository. And that is possible with git reset command. And there are actually three options in this command. Hard, mixed and soft. And depending on those options, different changes will be applied in working directory, staging area and git repository. Ok, let's try git reset in action. And first, uh, let's perform git pull operation in order to synchronize local and remote repository. git pull. And in my case, uh, I'm already up to date. And uh, let's enter git log. And uh, please take note of this SHA-1 hash. It starts with fd0e. And the previous commit has this SHA-1 hash. And let's suppose that I want to reset the state of my repository to this commit. And in such case, this commit will be lost, will be discarded. And uh, let's do that using git reset command with this SHA-1 hash as option. Let me copy it and uh, let's close this and let's enter git reset and paste copied SHA-1 hash without any options. Press enter and now I'll see that there are unstaged changes. And if I'll enter git status, I'll see those changes here. And those two files are not staged for commit. And that means that by default, git uh, discards commit or commits. In our case, one commit was discarded and also unstages files. But changes were kept in working directory. It means that uh, by default, this operation is relatively safe. If you want to continue working on your changes, you can do that from this point on. But uh, commit was actually discarded and the changes from staging area were removed as well. And if I'll have a look at output of git log command, I'll see this commit as last one here in history. And now head points to dev branch, still points to dev branch, and dev branch points to this commit in history. I can reset, for example, to this commit. Let me copy its SHA-1 hash, close this output, and enter git reset and paste this SHA hash. And let's enter git log once again. And now this commit is last one in history. And that means that using git reset command, you are able to reset to any of the commits in history. 
and all next changes that were made after that commit in the history will be preserved in working directory. And uh, by default, Git actually applies mixed mode operation. And with mixed mode, Git discards commit and discards changes in staging area. But all changes are kept in working directory. And again, Git status proves that. And uh, at this moment of time, we are able actually stage those changes and afterwards commit them again. Let's do that quickly. Git add dot and let's enter git status again. Now two files are ready to be committed. Let's commit them. git commit dash m files were modified by Bogdan. Enter. And if I'll have a look at history now, I'll see this new commit. And the two previous commits were disappeared. That's how you are able to perform reset operation and afterwards recommit changes and Git will create brand new commit. Ok, that is the default mode of operation mixed. Let's now try another option soft. Let's for example have a look again at history and let's revert back to this commit. Actually reset back to this commit. Because reverting is other operation, we will talk about it later on in the section. Ok, let me copy this hash and enter git reset dash dash soft and paste this hash. Enter. Now you see that there are again changes in my repository and if I'll enter git status, you'll see that there are two files ready to be committed. It means that uh, with soft mode of operation, git discards only changes in git repository. It resets only commit, but changes are kept in staging area or index. And that means that uh, now I am able simply create another commit and uh, those changes are already present in staging area. Let's do that. git commit dash m changes recommitted after soft reset, like so. Enter. And now changes were committed again and uh, now there is additional commit here that starts with 57bc in my case. Ok, and now let's try last mode and the last mode is hard, hard reset. Let's for example reset uh, to this commit. Let me copy this SHA-1 hash and clear terminal and enter git reset dash dash hard and paste this SHA hash, enter. And now you'll see that there are no changes in git repository. And if I'll enter git status, you don't see any changes either in working directory or staging area. And that means that with hard option, git will reset commit, reset staging area and reset working directory. And that means that files that uh, were changed after specific commit will be simply removed or updated back. And it is actually the most destructive options of all three options available with git reset command. So please use this option with caution. And if I'll enter git log, I'll see simply this last commit in history made by Katashin and uh, all further commits will be simply discarded. That is a git reset command. Please note again that this command is destructive and it actually modifies history. Now we don't see remaining commits after this one. But if I'll enter git pull and pull changes from remote repository, I'll actually get back all remaining commits that I have reset because my repository is actually clone of remote repository. And now in history, I'll see again all commits that I have resetted locally. And notice that I have actually used the reset operation on public branch, on dev branch, but I didn't push those changes to remote. And that means that uh, those destructive changes that I have made locally were not applied to public branch dev branch. But you are able safely use uh, git reset on any private branches, for example, if you have created additional branch and you are working on that branch yourself, solely yourself, and locally on your computer you are able to perform reset pretty safely. One more option that I wanted to show you here is that you are able to reset by specific quantity of commits. What I mean? Let me clear terminal and type git reset, then head, then wave sign and let's type for example 5 here. In such case, I'll reset 5 last commits. 
And again, by default, mixed option was applied. And now those files listed here will be available here actually in working directory, but they were removed from staging area and from Git repository. And if you want to continue work on them, you can do that and afterwards add those files to staging area and afterwards commit them if you want. Okay, that's the last option I wanted to show you here in this lecture. Let me actually revert my local repository back to the state synchronized with remote repository. And for that, let me perform hard reset and let's, for example, reset to this commit. Let me copy this hash, git reset dash dash hard and paste this hash. And now let's perform git pull operation. And now local repository is synchronized again with remote repository. Let's now proceed and in the next lecture I'll explain you what is git revert command. Revert is not actually destructive operation and it creates new commit that actually discards changes from other commit. Okay, let's talk about git revert in the next lecture. Bye. Okay, we have just talked about git reset command and you know that this command is destructive command and it modifies git history. And how it works is that uh, you supply to this command uh, SHA-1 hash of specific commit and uh, git resets git repository, working directory and staging area to specific commit. And all next commits will be simply removed. And there are actually three modes of operation, soft, mixed and uh, hard and by default mixed mode of operation is applied. And in this lecture let me explain you what is git revert. Git revert in opposite to git reset is not destructive operation and it doesn't modify git history and that's why it could be safely used on any public branches like master, release or dev as in our case. And uh, git revert operation reverts specific commit, just single commit. And uh, you need just uh, SHA-1 hash of that commit and git revert will take specific commit and then inverse all changes that were made in that commit and create brand new commit. Let's actually try this command in action. And I am still in view repository and here let me type following first, git log. And let's have a note of this last commit here in history. It starts with fd0e, same as in previous lecture. And now let me enter git revert. And here I'll type simply head. In a moment I'll explain you why I have used here head. Let's press enter. And you'll see that git offers me to edit commit message. And that is fully correct because I'm reverting specific commit Git creates new commit with opposite changes to specific commit and uh, now I am able to adjust commit message. And you see that in this default commit message Git will revert commit with this SHA-1 hash. And that's exactly the last commit in history. And that's what actually git revert with head as argument does. Head now points to the last commit in history. That's why if you want to revert last commit you don't need to get its SHA-1 hash, you need simply enter head as argument, nothing else. And here again you are able to modify this commit message. I am happy with this default message, that's why I'll type here colon wq, because git has opened this commit message in vim editor. And let's press enter, and now changes were committed. And now let's have a look at history, git log, and you'll see new commit here after previous one. And this commit actually reverts this commit. And again, please notice that uh, history wasn't adjusted and uh, I am able even push this change to remote repository. But I don't have actually rights to do that, but it is safe operation and if you want to apply changes to public branch, you are able to do so. Again, this command inverses changes. Let's actually have a look at the actual changes in last commit, this one that I have made and previous one. Let's close this output and uh, let's type here git log and let's add option dash p that will show us actual changes in every commit. Let's press enter and if I'll scroll down I'll see that in last commit, reverted commit, there was change in file bakers.md and uh, this section was removed. But if I'll scroll down to previous commit, this one, you'll see that in that commit this section was added. 
And that's what I have just told you. With git revert, git simply takes all changes in specific commit and reverts them, inverses them. And that's how it actually works. This command is really, really useful when you have already pushed changes to remote repository in specific public branch and some other people have already pulled those changes. And that's why in this case, if you want to revert back changes, you don't have any other option except git revert. That's all in this lecture and please note that git reset is destructive operation and git revert is safe operation and it doesn't modify history, but it adds additional commit. And another difference, with git revert, you revert only single commit. With git reset, you are able to reset multiple commits. And uh, let me show you one more thing, actually last thing in this lecture. Let's have a look again at git log and find another commit, for example, this one. And let's observe changes in this specific commit git show and paste this hash, like so, and uh, I'll see that uh, this section was removed and uh, this section was removed as well. And let's now try to perform revert of this specific commit using its SHA-1 hash. git revert and paste same SHA-1 hash. And now I see that I am not able to revert this specific commit due to conflicts. And if I'll enter git status now, you'll see that uh, there are actually unmerged paths and I need to resolve conflicts first and after that continue revert operation. Let's try to resolve conflicts and let's do that in Visual Studio Code, for example. I'll open it directly from terminal here. And here let's click on the git icon and I see that there are conflicts actually in two files, bakers.md and readme.md. Let me scroll down and find the place where actual conflict has appeared. Here it is. Let me make it a bit smaller. And let's assume that uh, I am happy with current changes. And uh, in such case, I am able to click just on this button, accept current change and uh, save the file. Also, let's open up readme.md file and uh, find conflict here. Here it is. And uh, let's assume that uh, I'm also happy here with current change. Let's accept current change, save the file. And uh, now I am able to proceed with revert operation. Let's go back to terminal and uh, type here git revert dash dash continue. Of course, before that, uh, I need to add changes to staging area, git add dot. And afterwards, let's continue with revert operation. And git offers us again to edit the commit message. I am happy with this one. And I'll type again colon wq. And uh, changes were committed. Let's have a look at history and here is this reverted commit. And let me copy its SHA-1 hash and have a look at changes in that commit. Git show and paste this hash. And if I'll scroll down, you'll see that this section was added. And in a commit that we have reverted, this section was actually removed. And again, it proves that uh, git revert operation simply inverses changes in specific commit. Okay, you are also able to observe those changes in repository, for example, in GitHub desktop. Let's go there and here let's open history tab. And the last two commits are commits made by myself. And here you see commit message for every commit. And this commit reverse commit with this SHA-1 hash. And this commit reverse commit with this SHA-1 hash. And actually, if I'll click on this one, you'll see that this section starting from TR and till this closing TR was added. And in this commit, I have reverted this commit. And that's why in this commit, you see that in bakers.md file, this section was simply removed. Same applies to readme.md file. Here in reverted commit, this section was removed. And in previous commit that we have actually reverted, this section was added. And now if I combine this commit and reverted commit, it will lead to the fact that uh, changes applied in those files, bakers.md and readme.md, were actually discarded. And now I am safely able to push to origin because again, this operation is not destructive. Okay, that's all for this lecture. And in the next one, let me explain you what is a meant option while working with commits. See you next. Bye bye. Now let's talk about a meant option for git commit command. This option is useful when you have occasionally made uh, some typo or mistake in a very last commit. 
With amend option you are able to adjust information in this last commit. But please note that anyway git will create brand new commit and previous one will be garbage collected. That's why this operation is actually destructive operation and again all destructive operations as we have discussed before should be done with caution only on private branches. So let's suppose that uh, I have made the mistake in a very last commit message and uh, I want to adjust commit message in a very last commit. Let's have a look at last commit here in history and here is its message. Let's use amend option in order to modify this commit message. Let's close this output and uh, let's enter git commit dash dash amend then dash m option message and here will be new message new message for the last commit, like so. Let's press enter and changes were applied. Let's have a look at history once again, git log, and here you see this new commit message. And please have a look at this SHA-1 hash, it is a new SHA-1 hash of the new commit. Let's actually modify message once again and please note that this SHA-1 hash starts with A2. Let's close this and let's modify message to new message for the last commit and add exclamation mark. Let me use here backslash and exclamation mark and close in double quotes. And now changes were applied and let's have a look at history once again. And here you see new SHA-1 hash. And the reason for that is that commit message was adjusted and it doesn't match commit message in a previous commit. And uh, you know from the previous sections that uh, SHA-1 hash of every object in Git uh, repository is based on the contents of the object itself. And here we have changed actually contents of the object and that's why this object has got new SHA-1 hash. Ok, let's suppose that uh, you want to adjust author of the very last commit and in my case author is here. And in such case you could use option dash dash author with amend option. Let's clear terminal and here let's type git commit dash dash amend dash dash author equal sign and here will be new author let's say mike githubber and here will be his email mike githubber at gmail.com and let's apply changes here i am prompted to modify commit message in a new commit and uh, notice that uh, message is actually taken from the previous commit that we are actually amending let's assume that i am happy with this message let's type colon wq as usually and commit was made. Let's have a look at history, git log, and now you see information about new author of the last commit. And SHA-1 hash of course is new, because git has created basically new commit. Ok, that's how you are able to modify information in a very last commit. Please notice that you are not able to use this command with older commits. Ok, that's all for this lecture and in the next one let me talk about uh, cherry picking. Cherry picking allows you to take any commit in Git repository and apply it to currently checked out branch. This operation is not destructive, it doesn't modify Git history and it simply creates new commit in a currently checked out branch. Let's talk about cherry picking next. Bye bye. In this lecture I would like to talk about cherry pick operation. And the cherry pick allows you to take any commit and uh, insert it into currently checked out branch as a last commit. And uh, you can use cherry pick operation in uh, several scenarios. For example, you are working on separate feature branch and uh, have made several commits there. And you want to take just one commit of that feature branch and insert into for example master branch or release branch, like a bug fix or something else. And you are able to do that with cherry pick operation. Another scenario. For example, you have moved to detached head state and moved one or two commits there. But you don't want to create new feature branch and afterwards merge it into release or master branch. You just want to take one or both commits from detached head state and afterwards insert them into master or release branch. You are able to do this also using cherry pick operation. Ok, let's have a look at uh, cherry pick in action. And uh, let's uh, do following first. Let's create temporal branch called temp. Afterwards, let's make some changes in that branch, commit them, and then return back to dev branch and cherry pick commit made in temp branch. Ok, let's create new branch. 
git checkout, dash b and here in double quotes write temp. I'll create temp branch and immediately check out it. Now I'm in a new temp branch. Now let's go to VS Code where I have already opened this repository and let's make some changes and let me adjust, for example, readme file and uh, let's assume that I want to modify width of this image and let's make it 200 pixels. Let's save changes. Let's uh, commit changes. git commit dash a dash m some changes of the width like so and the changes were committed git log and here is this commit in temp branch but let's assume that i don't want to merge this temp branch into dev branch instead i simply want to take this commit and insert it into dev branch for that i need shaven hash or part of it of this commit let me copy it and return back to dev branch git checkout dev Let's clear terminal here and here type git cherry pick and paste shaven hash that I have just copied from temp branch. Let's press enter and now you see that new commit was automatically created in dev branch. And if I'll have a look at history here, you'll see this commit same as was made in temp branch. But of course here shaven hash will be different now because git has created brand new commit object it has another date of creation and that's why shaven hash of this commit object is completely different but that's how you're able pretty fast and easy take commit from any other place and insert into currently checked out branch and again notice that this operation isn't destructive it uh, simply allows you to apply any other changes pretty fast and easy you are also able to pass additional options to cherry pick command like dash dash no commit. Let's try that. Let's go back to temp branch, git checkout temp and make some changes again. Let's go back to VS code and let's adjust this width once again, 300 pixels. Let's commit change, git commit dash a dash m, change of the width in the temp branch. Let's commit this and uh, let's have a look at the uh, shaven hash of this commit object. This one, let me copy it and return back to dev branch, git checkout dev. And here let's uh, cherry pick, but with option dash dash no commit. Let's clear terminal, git cherry pick, dash dash no commit and paste shaven hash like so. And now you see that there are changes that were not yet committed. Let's have a look at status of git repository, git status, and you see that file readme.md was modified. And we are able to actually commit those changes using new commit message. But before committing, let's actually have a look at changes in readme.md file. For that, I can enter git status with verbose option. And you'll see that uh, this change was actually made. We have adjusted the width here in this uh, image HTML tag. And that's change that we have made in VS Code in temp branch. But uh, as you see with dash dash no commit option, you are able to commit yourself adding a new commit message if you want. And let's do that. git commit dash m changed image width. Like so. Let's commit it. And now I'll see new commit here in history with this commit message. But changes are exactly the same as we have made in temp branch. And we can prove that by entering git show. Actually, let me copy shaven hash of this commit object and clear terminal and enter git show and paste this hash. And here below you see this change. Okay, that's how you are able to use cherry pick operation. And again, it is useful when you want to take just one commit from any other branch or for example, the test head state and apply it to currently checked out branch. Okay, that's all for this lecture and the next one, let me talk about reflog command, git reflog. I'll see you soon, bye bye. In this lecture, I would like to talk about a very useful command that actually shows entire history of all operations made in repository. But please note that uh, this command will output only changes that you have made on your computer on your local repository. And it is actually log of all operations. And using results of this command, you are able, for example, 
revert back to the state that uh, was in repository before performing reset operation. Let's assume that you have resetted uh, your repository to five commits back and afterwards you want to revert this operation as well and uh, get five commits back again. That is possible using git ref log command. Let's have a look at it in action. Let's enter git ref log simply in this repository, git ref log. And you'll see here this output. In this output you see SHA-1 hash, then you see references, if any. For example, here is current reference of head, it points to dev branch and the dev branch points to this commit. Then you see strange abbreviation like head, add and in curly braces zero. This is actually counter for specific reference. And notice that by default in this output of git ref log command you see all references of head, all operations made with ref head. And last operation here that was made with head pointer is actually commit with message changed image width. That is a commit that we have made in a previous lecture. Before that we have moved from temp branch to dev branch and we have actually moved head pointer from temp branch to dev branch. That's why this operation is related to head reference. Let's actually try to have a look at all operations that we have performed in temp branch. For that you can close this output and write git ref log show and here write name of the branch, for example temp. And I'll see here only three operations. And we have actually created branch from the head, here is first action. Next action we have committed some changes, some changes of the width. And afterwards we have made additional commit, change of the width in a temp branch. And that's actually all operations that we have performed in temp branch. And here in this list we see actually all of them. You can list uh, all historical operations in any branch you want. For example, we can have a look at uh, history of commands in dev branch, like so. And now this list contains only actions that were performed in dev branch. Ok, let's go back to ref log, history of all commands made with head. And let me show you what we are able to do with this information. First, you are able to go into the touched head state and check out any commit from this list, for example this one. Let me copy its SHA-1 hash and enter git checkout, paste hash and now I am in the touched head state and I have checked out specific commit, specific state of our repository. Ok, let's go back to dev branch, git checkout, dev. And if I'll enter git ref log now, git ref log, I'll see actually this operation here in the list. I have checked out specific commit by its SHA-1 hash and here git has recorded this operation. And last operation after this one was moving from this commit to dev branch back again. And please notice that counter here in curly braces is actually dynamic and first line here in output will always have counter zero, next one will be first, next one second and so on. And you are able actually use this pointer instead of SHA-1 hash when performing for example checkout operation. Let me copy this, close this and here type git checkout and paste head at number 6. And now I am again in the touched head state, in state where this repository was 6 operations back. We are also able to get to the previous state using head at curly braces 1 like so. And let's for example get back to dev branch like this. Let's enter git ref log once again and now I'll see all those operations here on the list. Let's now do the following. Let's now try to perform hard reset of dev branch and uh, let's get back to one of the previous commits that we have made uh, several days ago for example. Let's have a look at uh, git lg history and uh, let me for example go to this commit that was made 5 weeks ago, this one. Let me copy its show and hash, clear terminal and here type git reset dash dash hard and here paste sha one hash and now head points to the commit that was made 5 weeks ago. Let's have a look at history, git lg and here is this commit. Now head points to dev branch, still dev branch and dev branch points to this commit. Ok, but what if I'll enter git ref log now? I'll see this operation here on the list. 
Last operation is resetting of repository and we have moved to this commit. But before that we were in dev branch and dev branch has pointed to this shavan hash. And if I am not happy with reset operation and won't get back to the state before git reset, I am simply able to perform another git reset but using this shavan hash. Let me copy it, close this output and enter git reset, again hard, and paste hash, like so. And now if I'll have a look at history, git lg, I'll see all changes back again. And last change was change of image width that I have made 20 minutes ago. That's how you are able to use ref log output. In some cases it may be really useful, especially if you want to get back to specific state of repository where you was for example before any destructive operation like reset or something else. Ok, but please keep in mind that this operation lists operations that were performed only locally in your repository. It doesn't show you operations made in remote repository or on other computers of other collaborators. It is only local ref log. And please note that messages here in this ref log are kept by default 90 days. And that means that you are not able to get back to some states that your repository was in longer than 90 days. Ok, that's all for this lecture and in the next one let me talk about stashing. And with stashing you are able to save uncommitted changes, temporarily save, and later on you are able to retrieve those changes from the stash and apply to your working directory. Let's discuss it next. Bye bye. In this lecture we will talk about git stashing. But what is stashing? Let me explain you first. Let's assume that you are working on specific feature branch, let's call it temp branch. And you have created some new files, you have modified some files, you have even staged some changes. But you have not yet committed them. And let's suppose that at this moment of time you want to check out other feature branch, for example temp2 branch. But you want to keep changes made in temp branch. And that's where station comes in. It allows you to save uncommitted rock. And uh, after coming back to, let's say, temp branch, you are able to retrieve changes from stash and continue work on them. That's what is stashing. But now let's try it actually in action. And for that we already have temp branch. If you don't have, please create any temp branch. And let me check out this temp branch. git checkout temp. And let's make some changes here in this branch. Let me do that in Visual Studio Code and let's change, for example, this file. Let's get back to width 200 pixels and let's adjust bakers.md file and here let's remove target blank, like so. Let's save this file. And uh, now there are two modified files. Let's have a look at status of repository. Yes, here they are. I can even stage those files. Let's add them to staging area. Or even let's add just one file to staging area, bakers.md, this one. And uh, now let's assume that I want to get back to dev branch and uh, do some work there. And for that I need to first stash those changes made in temp branch. How I can do that? Simply typing git stash command. That's all. Let's press enter and changes were stashed. And here you see notice saved working directory and index state VAP on temp. And here is SHA1 hash and then comes change of the width in a temp branch. So what is that? Let's first have a look again at the bakers.md file and readme.md file. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code and here you'll see preview states of those files. Here you see again target blank and here in readme.md file width is again 300 pixels. And that means that stashing operation has somehow removed changes made in those two files and saved them for further use. But where actually those changes are currently located? Let me show you. Let's have a look at contents of the .git slash refs slash stash. And here you'll see this file and actually we can have a look at it like so. cut.git slash refs slash stash. And here you'll see SHA1 hash. Let's have a look at contents of this git object. git cut file dash p and let's copy this SHA1 hash, paste here. And now I'll see actually commit object. I can 
replace dash p with dash t and you'll see that type of this object is commit. And here are contents of this commit object. It points to this tree and it has two parents. Outer is me. And commit message is this one. VIP on temp, then comes SHA-1 hash and then comes change of the width in temp branch. And that's exactly what we have seen here after entering git stash command. And that means that after git stash, git creates temporal commit, it stores it in git repository, and it creates reference to this commit in refs slash stash file. And that allows us to get back to this stash later on if you want to. Let's do that. But before that, let's check out, uh, for example, dev branch, git checkout dev. And let's assume that later on we want to move back to temp branch. Let me clear terminal and check out temp branch again. Git checkout temp. And we have switched to temp branch. And if I'll have a look at contents of those files, readme.md and bakers.md, they are still in a previous state that was before adjustments. Let's now try to apply a stash. For that, you can simply type git stash and then pop, like so. Let's press enter. And now you see that there are again two modified files. And we have actually applied stash that I have just shown you. And if I'll have a look at contents of those files, you see those changes that were just applied. Here you see width 200 pixels and here you see that uh, target blank was removed. And that's because we have applied stash. And if I'll have a look at contents of the .git slash refs slash stash file once again, you'll see that there is no such file or directory. That's because git has automatically deleted stash file after we have applied this temporal stash. That's how stashing works. But let me show you actually in a more understandable way using graphical user interface github desktop. But let's try it after the small pause. See you next. I have just explained you what is stash and how to create stash and how to retrieve stash. And we have done that in terminal. Now let me show you how to do that pretty fast and easy using github desktop. And let's assume that we are still in temp branch and there are some changes in the same files, bakers.md and readme.md. And let's assume that now I want to go to another branch and for example I want to check out pull request, this one. And if I'll try to do that, I'm actually trying to switch to another branch because each pull request is actually bound to specific branch, GitHub Desktop will offer me choice. Either leave my changes on temp branch or bring my changes to PR slash 10.879. Let's choose first option, leave my changes on temp. And in such case, my work will be stashed on this branch and afterwards, when I will return back to this temp branch, Git will allow me to retrieve changes from stash. Let's leave my changes on temp branch. And let's click switch branch. Branches were switched and now I am on this branch. And now you see no changes here in this branch. But let's suppose that I have decided to get back to temp branch. Let's click here, go to branches and click on temp branch. GitHub desktop will show me that there are stashed changes. And I can actually view stash by clicking on this button. View stash. And here is actually stash. Here are changes in two files. And I can either discard this stash or restore it. And let's suppose that I want to restore this stash and reapply it to temp branch. I can just simply click on this button. Restore. And now I see those changes back again. That's how you can easily and fast create stash and restore stash using GitHub Desktop. Okay, that's all about stashing and uh, it is actually useful when you have unsaved, uncommitted work and you want to continue work on other features and afterwards get back to original feature and proceed there. Okay, that's all for this lecture and that's all actually about stashing and in the next lecture I would like to talk about garbage collection and uh, I'll show you how you're able to run garbage collection on demand manually from terminal. I'll see you next. Bye bye. In this lecture, I would like to talk about garbage collection in Git. And you know that garbage collection is actually automatic operation that Git performs from time to time in order to clean repository. And for example, using garbage collection, Git deletes uh, 
unreachable objects or old references in git ref log. And you can actually run garbage collection from terminal if you want to. And uh, garbage collection will not just uh, delete obsolete records, it will also pack git objects in a pack file. What is that? I have actually explained you that uh, pack file is actually archive of git objects that uh, allows you to make uh, git repository much more smaller. And if you clone any remote repository from remote server, usually you actually download packed objects in a pack file and afterwards on demand git actually unpacks some of objects that you are using. Now let's actually try to run garbage collection here from terminal and before that let me actually undo changes made in previous lectures. For that I can go either to Visual Studio Code and click here on those icons, undo or discard changes, discard changes for this file, or I can discard changes here in GitHub desktop by clicking on this file and choosing here discard changes. And discard changes here. Ok, let's go back to terminal and here my repository is clean. And uh, now let's have a look at contents of the git objects folder, ls.git slash objects. And I'll see a bunch of subfolders and we have talked about uh, those uh, names in a section dedicated to understanding of git. And also you see here pack folder. Let's have a look at contents of the pack folder. And there are two files, idx file and pack file. And that means that uh, at the moment there are already pack files in this repository and if I'll perform garbage collection now, git will actually leave some files in those folders and move some of the files into pack folder. It will decide about that depending on how long we didn't use specific files. Ok, let's run garbage collection. git jc, like so. Let's press enter. Counting objects, compressing objects and job was done. And if I'll have a look at contents of the .git slash objects folder once again, you'll see that now it contains much less folders. And that means that uh, remaining files in remaining folders were compressed into updated pack file. And if I'll have a look at pack file like so, you'll see that the names of those files idx and pack are different from those names, because git has actually created new pack file along with new index file. And also with this command git will clean unreachable objects, old reflog records and so on. That's how git garbage collection works in action. That's all for this short lecture and in the next one let me get back to rebasing and talk about rebasing with squashing. Let's discuss it next. Bye bye. In many public, especially large repositories with many collaborators, many pull requests, many feature branches, technique of rebasing with quashing is applied when merging specific pull request or specific branch into main branch, release or master. And in this lecture I would like to explain you and show actually in action how rebasing with quashing works. And uh, before that let me actually show you this commit, sample commit from view repository. And you may notice that the commit message here consists actually of three different messages. And the reason for that is uh, this single commit was constructed from three different other commits created in feature branch. That's why after merging of specific feature branch into dev branch in such case, instead of three commits, only one commit was added. And you notice that this repository, we have seen that before, has not so many merge commits. And the reason for that is that uh, those guys don't actually perform three-way merging, instead they are using rebasing with quashing. When every feature actually collapses only to single commit that is added to main dev branch in this case. And this is very useful when you want to keep uh, your history line of uh, public branches pretty pretty clean. And uh, there are not so many commits that have multiple parents. In one of the previous lectures when I have shown you no marriages and marriages option with git lock uh, command, you have seen that uh, there are not so many marriage commits at all. And such approach is broadly used in many many different public repositories with many collaborators. And now let me actually quickly create a new repository under my githubers account 
and uh, afterwards I'll create a new feature branch, make several commits there, and uh, next I'll perform rebasing with quashing of that feature branch into master branch. Let's do that. Let's create a new folder here on desktop, CD desktop, and here let's mkdir rebasing with squashing. Let's actually copy this name and create repository first at uh, remote GitHub server. Let me go there and click on repositories here and uh, create here new repository. You should create new repository under your own account. And here repository name will be rebasing with squashing. And description will be let's make history clean by creating just a single commit for every feature branch. That's actually what rebasing with squashing does. Let me make this repository public as usually, initialize with readme file and create repository. Creating. And let's clone this repository to local computer, copy this URL, go to terminal and here on the desktop, git clone, paste URL, cloning, cd to rebasing with squashing. Current branch is master branch and there is just single file readme.md. And let's quickly create new branch. For example, let's check out with dash b option branch, let's say feature one. And uh, let's create several commits here. And I'll quickly create several files and uh, commit every file. Touch file1.txt, git add file1.txt, git commit dash m first commit in feature one branch. Then next file, touch file2.txt, git add file2.txt, git commit dash m second commit in the feature one branch. One more file, touch file3.txt, git add file3.txt, git commit dash m, third commit in the feature one branch. I think it's enough, uh, three commits were created. And now let's push changes to remote repository, git push dash u. We need to create upstream branch for feature one branch, origin and also name of remote branch, feature one, pushing. And now let's go to remote repository and here let's create pull request from feature one branch. Compare and pull request. And here let's uh, name this pull request, feature one branch with some files. And uh, here let's leave a comment, several files created in the feature one branch. And let's open pull request. Creating pull request. And pull request was created and uh, here you see three commits that were made in this feature one branch. And there are actually three files that were changed. Okay, let's go back to conversation here, scroll down and let's merge pull request. But uh, I can click here on this drop down icon and you'll see several options. Either create merge commit, or squash and merge, or rebase and merge. And now I'll show you how to perform squash and merge. And in such case, three commits from this branch will be combined into one commit in a base branch. Let's choose this option, squash and merge, and click on this button. And you'll see that uh, new commit that will be created from three commits that we have created in feature one branch will have combined commit message that will contain all three commit messages from previous commits. First commit in feature one branch, second commit in feature one branch, and third commit in a feature one branch. Okay, let's confirm squash and merge. Merging. And merge was successful. If I'll go now to master branch, because main branch for this repository is master, you'll see only two commits. First commit was initial commit that was made automatically by GitHub when it has created readme.md file. And the second commit is a combined commit for three commits in a feature one branch. And that's how merging with squashing works. 
actually it is rebasing with squashing because you don't see any marriage commits here in this git history. And if I'll click here on this commit, you'll see commit message and extended commit description. And there are three changes of files here in this single commit. And if I'll pull changes to local repository, let's do that. Let's go to master branch, git checkout master, clear terminal, and git pull, pulling changes. And if I'll have a look at history here, git lg, I'll see again only two commits. That's how squashing works. With help of squashing, we're able to combine all commits from feature branch just into single commit that is created in main, in our case, master branch. I have shown you how to perform squashing using GitHub, but in the next lecture, I'll explain you and show you how to perform the same action locally in terminal. And for that, you need to perform interactive rebasing. Let's do that next. Bye bye. We have just discussed rebasing with squashing and I have demonstrated you how to perform this task rebasing with squashing of specific pull request at GitHub. It is very easy, just a single button click. But if you want to do the same locally, it is a bit more complicated and it requires performing of rebasing with option interactive or dash i. Let's try to do that, but uh, first uh, let's create one more branch feature too. Let's make several commits there and after that perform rebasing with squashing. It is actually interactive rebasing. Let's do that. I am still in rebasing with squashing repository. There are two branches, git branch and there is master branch and feature one branch. Actually, I am able to delete feature one branch. It is not needed anymore. We have already merged it. git branch dash d feature one. And now let's create new branch, git checkout dash b feature two, like so. And here in this branch, let's create several files again, pretty quickly, touch file for the txt, git add dot, git commit dash m file form was created in the feature to branch. I want to be specific here in order to understand later on which commits we want to squash. Let's press enter, touch file 5.txt, git add dot, git commit dash m, file 5 was created in the feature to branch. One more file, touch file 6.txt, git add dot, git commit dash m, file 6 was created in the feature to branch. Ok, three commits enough. And uh, let's have a look at history, git lg, and uh, there are three commits made in feature to branch. Origin slash master, origin slash head and master are pointing to this commit. Let's now perform interactive rebasing with squashing of all those three commits. For that, you need to use git rebase command with option dash i, interactive. And you need to either specify quantity of commits you want to rebase, like head, wave, three. In our case, there are just three commits created in feature to branch. But let me first show you first approach when you specify SHA-1 hash of specific commit that uh, comes before all commits that you want to squash. And in our case, we want to rebase with squashing those three commits. And that's why I need to specify this SHA-1 hash of this commit as argument for git rebase command. Let's copy this SHA-1 hash. Again, it is last commit before creation of feature to branch. And here let's clear terminal and type git rebase dash i interactive. And here paste SHA-1 hash. And you'll see here this strange output. And you need to edit this file if you want to squash all commits into just single commit. And here in this file, you see actually three messages of all commits that we have created in feature to branch. And first comes first commit that was created at the very beginning of feature to branch. It is first commit that we have created. Here is second commit. And here is last commit when we have created file six in feature to branch. And if you want to squash all those three commits into single commit, you need to replace this peak and this peak 
with word squash. Or you can just use single letter S. Let's do that. Let's press I, insert. And here in insert mode, replace peak with S, stands for squash. And replace peak here with S as well. And now I'm able to write changes to this file. And afterwards, Git will create new single commit that will be based on those three commits created in feature to branch. Let's do that. Escape, colon, WQ, enter. And here you'll see commit message. This is a combination of three commits. And below you'll see commit messages of all three commits that were created in feature to branch. And let's assume that we want to keep all those commit messages in a single commit that will be created afterwards. I am happy with that. Let's type again colon WQ, enter, and rebasing was successful. Git has actually created just single commit instead of three commits in feature to branch. Let's now have a look at history in feature to branch. Git LG. And I'll see now only single commit instead of three commits. Git has replaced three commits with just single commit. But in this commit, it has incorporated all changes from previous three commits when we have created three files. And if I'll have a look at contents of working directory, ls, you'll see those files here on the list, file 4, file 5, and file 6. And now I'm safely able to merge feature to branch into main master branch. Let's do that. Let's check out master branch, git check out master, and let's merge feature 2 into master branch. git merge, dash v, and here type name of the branch, feature 2, enter, and merging was successful. And as you see from this output, git has applied fast forward merge approach. And that is fully correct, because we have just performed rebasing. And from the section dedicated to rebasing, you know that the uh, purpose of rebasing is actually putting all commits uh, from specific feature branch on top of main base branch. And that allows afterwards just move pointer of the base branch to last commit in feature branch. That's what was done just by git here in this repository. Okay, let's have a look at history now in master branch, git log, and I'll see this last commit here in history where we have created three files. And this last commit looks pretty similar to this commit that was automatically created at GitHub when we have performed rebasing of squashing there. And that's how you're able to perform same operation locally on your computer. You need to use git rebase command with option dash i interactive and afterwards in a file that will contain several commits replace pick with squash or s. And um, as argument in uh, git rebase command, you need to pass SHA-1 hash of commit that was last commit before creation of specific feature branch. Of course, doing the same operation directly at GitHub is much more simple and uh, it is just a single button click, but I wanted to explain you how you are able actually to do the same locally in your local repository. Okay, that's all about rebasing with squashing. And in the next lecture, let me quickly explain you how a normal workflow looks like while you are working on development of specific feature branch. See you next. Bye-bye. In this lecture, I would like to talk about usual development workflow that is applied to when you are working on specific features in feature branches. And as you already know, there are so-called public and private branches. And public branches are branches like master, release, or dev, as in this sample repository called view that we have cloned from remote repository. And those branches are usually set as protected branches, and only owners are able to merge pull requests or other branches into those branches. And when specific feature is completed, owner of this repository merges pull request for this feature branch into this public branch. And uh, sometimes, very often this happens, you are still developing your own feature, while other features are being merged into public branch. And very often you want to be up to date with other changes, with other features. And in such case, you need to merge public branches into your current feature branch you are currently working on. 
Again, you need to do that in order to be up to date with all changes already applied to public branches. And let me now show you actually how to do that quickly using GitHub Desktop. And uh, now you see that uh, we are on dev branch, it is actually public branch. And we have some commits locally that were not yet pushed to remote repository. But I actually don't have right access for this repository. That's why I'll simply reset uh, those uh, commits and get back to the state uh, that is the same as remote repository state. Let's do that. Unfortunately, GitHub Desktop uh, doesn't have at the moment feature of resetting commits to specific commit. For example, if I'll choose this commit and right mouse click here, I am only able to revert this commit. I am not able to reset state of this repository of this branch actually to this commit. That's why let me quickly reset uh, this repository to this commit in terminal. Let's go there and uh, make sure that you have opened this repository. Git LG. Let's find last commit in remote repository. This one. Let's copy its SHA-1 hash and let me reset repository using hard option to this commit, like so. And now if I'll go to GitHub desktop, I will not see offer to push to remote because now my local dev branch is synchronized with remote branch. And here you see last commit in local repository. It is the same as the last commit in remote repository. Okay, let's now do the following. Let me create new feature branch at this moment of time. After creation of new feature branch, I will merge one or two other branches into dev branch. Again, of course, locally. And uh, let me create a new branch called feature one. And here I can click button, create new branch. New branch will be created. Create branch. And uh, let me make some changes here. For example, let's uh, touch file one.txt, git add dot, git commit, dash m, file one in feature one branch. Okay, we have created one commit in feature one branch. And uh, now let's go back to dev branch and let's merge another branch into dev branch. Let's do that and uh, let's Choose, for example, branch to merge and let me merge, for example, this one. And I'll merge single commit from branch called PR slash 10879. And let's merge this branch into dev. Okay, successfully merged into dev. And now let's go back to feature one branch. And uh, now actually feature one branch does not have change that we have just incorporated into dev public branch. And if I want to be up to date with changes applied to dev branch, public branch, I need to merge those changes from dev branch into currently developing feature one branch. Let's do that. Let's click here on this drop down and here at the bottom, click on the button, choose a branch to merge into feature one. And we want to merge dev branch. That is the default branch for this repository. And please recap that uh, our goal is to be up to date with changes in main public branch. In our case, it is dev branch. And you'll see that uh, GitHub Desktop will merge one commit from dev into feature one. Let's just click on the button merge dev into feature one. Successfully merged dev into feature one. That's how it simply works in GitHub Desktop. But please note that in such case, three-way merge was applied and git has created new merge commit and here you see it, merge branch dev into feature one. If you want to avoid creation of merge commits, you could perform rebasing instead and rebase feature branch on top of master branch or release or dev branch as in our case. As you have just seen, merge of dev branch into feature one branch was performed smoothly and there were no merge conflicts. But that is not always the case. Very often, especially if you are working on a specific feature for a long time and didn't perform merge of public branch for a long time as well, and try to do that, you may get into a situation with many, many merge conflicts. And of course, in such case, you need to resolve merge conflicts first and afterwards complete merge. That's why, personally, I recommend you to merge public branches like dev, release or master into your current feature branches very often in order to avoid the creation of merge conflicts. 
Okay, that's all for this lecture and uh, I hope that uh, it will be useful for your development workflow in the future. Bye-bye. Thank you.